Section 8.6 of Young and Friedman's University of Physics has to do with rocket propulsion. The asterisk indi indicates, I believe, that there's some uh, calculus in this chapter that goes a little bit beyond what uh, all university students will be able to do, and so some professors will probably skip this section. Uh, however, the idea of rocket propulsion follows naturally from the idea of the conservation of momentum. Uh, because the momentum going forward has to uh, equal the momentum of the fuel exhausted going out the back of a rocket, we have a way of, of calculating uh, how, as the mass changes of the, the rocket, uh, because of the exhausted fuel, how its momentum uh, will be affected. So the, the mass of both the rocket and the propellant change over time. It's a, it's a fixed amount, right? Because as the, uh, there's a conservation of mass, as the mass is exhausted, uh, the mass of the rocket is uh, appropriately diminished. So there are a number of fixed elements to uh, this situation that makes it um, fairly uh, analyzable from a mathematic uh, uh, standpoint. Now, of course, uh, we should say that the rockets in this section are taken from the standpoint of a rocket being launched in outer space because if a rocket was launched from the Earth, of course, then you'd have to take gravity into account as well, and we haven't gotten that far in the textbook. Um, so the situation is ripe for analysis uh, on the basis of conservation of momentum because the total mass is constant. Uh, the mass of the rocket equals the mass times the, uh, the, the differential of mass, that is that the, the incremental change of the mass in calculus speak. Uh, now the change in mass for the rocket is of course going to be negative. This, this uh, differential of mass uh, dm is going to be negative because uh, um, the rocket is losing mass as the fuel is spent. The mass ejected of course is the opposite of the dm of the rocket. Um, and Since a negative of a negative is a positive, so the mass uh, ejected is going to be incrementally larger. Um, it flips positive, in other words, because the change in mass of the rocket is, is, is negative. And so, um, the velocity of the rocket uh, is going to be related in certain ways to the velocity of the exhaust. Uh, the velocity of the exhaust is going to be the, the velocity of the rocket, whatever it might be, um, minus uh, the velocity of the exhaust. Why? Because um, uh, the, the velocity of the exhaust at any one point uh, is going to be counteracted by the fact that the rocket is moving forward. So a as the, say the rocket has accelerated to 10 meters per second, then whatever the velocity of the exhaust coming out the other end is going to be subtracted from 10 meters per second. Uh, I hope you see what I'm saying. The velocity of the exhaust is going to be the velocity of the rocket um, minus the velocity uh, of the exhaust going the other direction. Of course, at some point, perhaps the velocity of the exhaust would, would be more than uh, the velocity going forward. Uh, and so in that case, you would begin to have a truly uh, negative uh, velocity. But anyway, so the velocity of the exhaust is going to be the velocity of the rocket minus the velocity of the fuel going out the back. Um, the velocity of the rocket is going to be velocity plus the differential of, of velocity. That is the incremental uh, change in uh, velocity uh, going forward, dv, uh, which again it gets into a little bit of calculus here. So there's a conservation of momentum, mass, uh, but momentum equals mass times velocity. So if we take uh, the mass times velocity uh, of the rocket, and we add it to the mass times the velocity of the exhaust, we're going to end up with the same amount of momentum uh, that the rocket had before it started expending the fuel. Now, if the rocket started from rest, then the initial mass times velocity was zero, right? Since the velocity started off as zero. But if the rocket was moving before it started, let's say we're, you know, it's a multi-stage rocket, and so the, the rocket was already moving before uh, that particular stage started expending its fuel. Then the initial mass times velocity is going to be some you know positive number. Um, if if it starts from rest, then the momentum going forward and the momentum going backward is going to counteract each other and, and equal zero. 
So basically, this equation bas basically takes the momentum of the rocket and adds it uh, to the momentum of the exhaust, and that's going whatever that total is, is going to be the same as the momentum the rocket had before it started expending the fuel. So the the um, the, ma the momentum going forward of the rocket is going to be mass pl m plus dm, that is the mass times the incremental increase of, of mass, plus v times v time plus v dv, the velocity plus the incremental increase uh, of velocity, mass times velocity of the rocket. And the second half is the uh, momentum of the uh, exhausted fuel, which is going to be uh, negative dm, that is the, the opposite of the incremental increase of mass, uh, or the, the opposite of the um, incremental I decrease of mass of the rocket is going to equal uh, the incremental uh, increase of mass of the, of the fuel expend. And then the velocity of the fuel expend is going to be the velocity of the rocket minus the velocity of the expended fuel. Um, so um, basically we're saying conservation of momentum. Whatever the momentum was to begin with, then the momentum of the rocket it, plus the momentum of the exhausted fuel is going to, when added together, equal the momentum that the rocket had before it started expending the fuel. So um, now of course we can do a little algebra to this equation. We, we multiply d plus dm times v plus dv out, and we multiply the uh, negative dm times v minus v exhaust. Uh, we, we multiply all that out, we s simplify, and we end up with uh, basically that m, uh, ma, uh, or, or basically m, we, ha we also, by the way, have to divide it by dt, uh, divided by the incremental increase in time. Um, so it's not just simplifying this, it also involves um, dividing by dt. Um, and so we end up with uh, m times dv dt, which is m times the acceleration, and mass times acceleration is force. So I've, I've left out some steps here um, for, the sim for simplicity. Um, just trust me, um, or better yet, read Young and Friedman how they, how they show it. But basically all I've done is we've multiplied out this uh, d plus dm times v plus dv plus, you know, we've, we've multiplied that out and we've divided both sides of the equation by dt, which as long as you do it to both sides of the equation, you're allowed to do that. And you're left with um, m dv dt. And again, the change in velocity per change in time, that's by definition acceleration. So m dv dt equals m a and force equals ma. So the, the force of the thrust of the rocket is going to equal then all the other terms on the other side of the equation as they have been um, collected and, and uh, then divided by dt. Uh, the equals the negative of the velocity of the exhaust times dm dt, which is the change, the incremental change of mass per incremental uh, increase of time. So there you have a basic equation for figuring out the thrust forward uh, of a rocket in relation to uh, the, the velocity of the exhaust and the uh, change in mass per time. Now um, note that the rocket doesn't push off the ground. So a rocket doesn't need something to push off of for it to move. Rather, uh, thrust comes from the conservation of momentum. As the fuel exhausted has momentum backwards, then the rocket has to compensate with momentum forward. This, it seems to me, is a, uh, basically a, a consequence of, of Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, something along that line. And so the rocket uh, doesn't, doesn't have to push off anything. It, it, the, by exhausting the fuel, it moves, it moves forward. Um, okay, further, uh, we, can, we can take this further, however, and I haven't shown all the steps. We can take this equation, the force of the thrust equals the opposite of the uh, velocity of the exhausted fuel uh, times the change in mass per time. We can take that, uh, have the equation there at the top, um, and we can go back to where to an earlier stage of it, multiply through by dt, 
and we end up with the, the, the differential dV um, equals the opposite of the velocity exhausted uh, dM divided by m. I get the, get the m off of the front of m dV dt by multiplying both sides by m. And so we've now put it in an equation that can be integrated. And so um, when I'm done integrating it, and again, you can see it uh, the, uh, in Young and Friedman, they show the, how the integration plays out. Uh, we end up with um, the, the velocity at any particular point minus the starting velocity equals the velocity of the exhausted fuel time the na times the natural, natural logarithm of mass divided by the initial mass or that is the mass at the same t at the m at any time v the mass at any velocity um, if uh, given that that moment in time the velocity at that time minus the initial velocity is going to equal the velocity exhausted times the natural logarithm of the mass divided by the initial mass and so one of the things this math tells us is that the the larger the ratio between the mass uh, lost um, uh, divided by the initial mass, the greater the velocity potential is. To put that in another way is the more, the greater the percentage of the rocket's mass is the fuel, then the, the greater the velocity uh, the rocket uh, can achieve. Well, this has been section 8.6 of Young and Friedman's University physics on uh, rocket propulsion uh, as a consequence of conservation of momentum.